Hi guys, my name's Lizzie. I'm a junior nursing student here, and I'm gonna show you what a sim situation looks like and what to expect in sim. So if you see up here, there's a green light, and right now it's off, but it'll turn green when it's your turn to go in. So once the green light turns on, you knock and walk in. First thing you wanna do when you walk in is make sure you acknowledge the patient. Hi, Mr. Jones, how you doing this morning? Go right over and wash your hands, first thing. to do is write your name on the board. Next you're going to go over to your computer and pull up the electronic health record. You can bring your own computer into SIM or you can use this one, whatever's easier. <laughs> Next thing you're going to do is identify the patient by looking at their wristband. Could I have your name and date of birth? Yes, it's John Jones, 1029-1940. All right, that matches with his bracelet, and his MRA number is 12345. I'm just going to double check that that matches on the electronic health record, and it does. It's very important in SIM to raise the level of the bed to an area that's comfortable for you to work with. You really want to Feel, pretend that this is real life and you want to prevent back injuries and you just want to be comfortable when you're working with the patient. Next thing you're going to want to do is a full set of vitals. So, first things first, you're going to do a heart rate and you want to listen to the heart for a full minute. You're going to listen over here for a full minute. Next thing you're going to do is listen to the respirations for a full minute as well. Sometimes in sim, it's hard to hear the difference between the heart sounds and lung sounds. So if you need to, say it out loud that you can't hear one or the other and they'll adjust the volume for you. Once you get the heart rate and respiratory rate, you're gonna wanna say them out loud and then they'll pop up on this computer, which will show a picture of it, what it would look like. Next, you're going to use this to pretend that you're taking a temperature. You don't actually have to put it in their mouth, but pretend. And the person, your instructor, will tell you what the temperature is. And same thing with pulse ox. You can just pretend, put, put it on there, and they'll tell you what it is. And for lastly, for the blood pressure, there's going to be a button over here that says start, and you're just going to press it, and the blood pressure will come up. For the vital signs, make sure that you acknowledge any abnormal vital signs when they pop up. The sixth vital sign that a lot of people forget is pain. You're going to want to ask the patient if they're in any pain right now, and if they say yes, you're going to ask 0 out of 10 and do your full pain assessment before you do your LDAs. Alright, so after vital signs, the next thing you're going to do is your LDAs. So LDAs is lines, drains, and airways. So first up, we have lines. On this patient, we don't really have anything attached, but we do have some peripheral IVs. So with gloves on, you're gonna wanna make sure you look around the site, ask them if they're having any pain with it, looking for any signs of redness, um, infection, phlebitis, infiltration, anything like that. Um, then what you're gonna wanna do is take a 10 ml syringe of normal saline and you're gonna to wanna to clean both and flush both with the 10 mLs of normal saline. And if they're on that side, you're gonna do it there too. If this patient was attached to any continuous fluids, it would be at this time that you would trace the line all the way to the pump, which would be like right here. You're gonna make sure it's running at the right rate and you'll double check that with the um, electronic health record. And you're also going to want to then go up to the bag and make sure it's the correct solution, amount, make sure it looks okay. And again, check that with the health record. So for drains, these can be anything like surgical drains, if somebody has um, a JP drain or something like that. It can also be a catheter if they have a Foley catheter in. So you're going to want to be checking, always checking the insertion sites, making sure there's no infection or bleeding or anything like that and also checking where it leads to make sure everything is intact there. Last but not least, we have airways. So if your patient's talking to you while you're asking them questions about pain and everything like that, then you know they have a patent airway. But also if they do have any supplemental oxygen, like a nasal cannula, 
venturi mask anything like that you're going to want to make sure the around that area is intact there's no skin breakdown and you're also going to want to go over to the oxygen make sure that it's at the right level and that it matches with the electronic health record next thing you're going to want to do is a full head to toe assessment this is something that you guys have probably learned by now and you'll go through it in pretty brief usually um, so basically same thing as you would always do you're going to start head to toe um, starting with neuro then you're going to do cardiac respiratory for respiratory these mannequins are extremely heavy and expensive so you're just going to verbalize that you would sit them up to listen on the back um, so just listen to the lung sounds here um, looking at the stomach you want to expose the stomach like at, like you would in real life and um, remember listen before palpating keep moving down you're going to be checking the feet for any um, edema anything like that feeling pulses you can feel the pulses on these it's a little tricky when you first start but making sure they're equal a lot of people also forget to check skin in their head-to-toe assessment so the big thing in the hospital for patients is pressure injuries so you're going to want to make sure you look at the bony prominences which are the elbows heels and coccyx um, you can look at the heels and elbows but of course you can't look at the patient's coccyx so you're just going to want to verbalize that and that goes with everything verbalize everything you're doing and any abnormalities you find um, because if you don't say it your instructor is not going to know that you knew it all right so now in sim is the time when you would start doing your interventions these are going to be different in every scenario but usually what you would need you're confined on this thing um, if you can't find something and it's taking you a long time just say it they'll probably tell you where to find it um, but yeah you have everything you might need a lot of times for the case specific scenarios your things that you'll need will be on the table over there already set up for you um, you just have to make sure you're looking at the labels to make sure because they can try to trick you <laughs> that the medications are different so let's just say in this scenario we're giving Tylenol so if we're giving Tylenol it might be over there it might be over here who knows but you're gonna want to make sure that you're doing your three checks you're gonna want to make sure you're doing your six rights of medication administration make sure you identify the patient again even though you just did it maybe 20 minutes ago you still want to do it again um, checking with this and just verbalize that you're giving it you're not actually gonna put anything in their mouth um, also if you need it there's a drug book in every sim room there's a drug handbook and there's an IV guide but make sure you prepare ahead of time because you don't want to be flipping through that in your 30 minutes before you leave the room there's a few things you're gonna want to do so first you're gonna make sure you lower the bed to the lowest level possible as a fall prevention um, you're gonna want to make sure you ask the patient if there's this is really loud. <laughs> you're going to want to make, sure, make sure that you ask the patient if there's anything else you can get for them before you go. You're going to want to say your call bell's right here. If you need anything, give me a ring. Overall, just make sure that patient safety is a priority and that all needs are met by the patient before you leave the room. All right, so that wraps up your simulation. Now, it can be a little scary first time around, first few times around, but don't worry. You'll do great and something that gives you a little peace of mind is that you can bring in anything to sim meaning helpful things that you think might help personally i like to write a full-on script and just hand write whatever i think is necessary that will give me a little reminder at this point i don't even look at it because it becomes second nature but at the beginning it's really helpful to do that so make sure you plan ahead don't wait till the day before to start planning and you're gonna do great.